In this talk, I will tell you about our recent study of local minima in quantum systems. This work was done at Caltech with my wonderful collaborators, Anthony Chen, Robert Huang, and John Preskill. Minimizing the energy of quantum systems is a fundamental problem in many fields, including physics, chemistry, and material science. This is the problem of finding or characterizing a quantum state rho that minimizes the energy function of the system, which is usually taken as the expectation of a Hamiltonian operator H. To address this problem, many powerful classical computational methods have already been developed. These classical methods often work surprisingly well and can find ground states of many physically relevant quantum systems. While in some cases, these methods might appear to fail, it can also be difficult to rule out alternative classical algorithms with better performance. It is an important open question in the field whether quantum computers have an advantage in finding low energy states of quantum systems. For some systems, we know that as for example, the 1D spectrally gapped quantum systems, that there is an efficient classical algorithm that can find their ground state. Well, we hope that the boundary of easy versus hard is different once we have a, a quantum computer. We also know from complexity theory results by Kitaev and others that finding the ground state of a general quantum system is QMA hard. Therefore, we expect that even a quantum computer cannot solve the ground state problem in, in general. Then the big question remains, what energy minimization problem is classically hard and quantumly easy so that we may achieve a quantum advantage? Well, the QMA hardness result implies that in general, even nature cannot find ground states of quantum systems. This means that ground states are not always physically relevant. Instead, when a physical system is cooling nature, it seeks a local minimum of the energy, which may be far from the global minima, AKA the ground states. And indeed, this is observed to be the case for systems such as spin glasses. Therefore, Local minima of quantum systems are potentially more physically relevant, and they should be considered as an alternative to the standard uh, ground state problem. Motivated by this perspective, we ask, how tractable is the problem of finding a local minimum of quantum systems using classical and quantum computers? We address this question by proving that a machine that cools physical system to local minima is a universal quantum computer. Therefore, under the standard assumption that quantum computers cannot be efficiently classically simulated, finding a local minimum is classically hard and quantumly easy. I will now delve into our result in more details, but first we need to define what we mean by a local minimum in quantum systems. Consider the domain of all n qubit states specified by density matrix rho. Each state is assigned an, an energy from a Hamiltonian H that governs the quantum system. To set the energy landscape, we also need to specify a family of perturbations that enable you to move between quantum states with vector theta that parameterizes the strength, strength and direction of the perturbation. Then we say a state rho is an epsilon approximate local minimum if perturbing the state in any direction can only increase its energy for all small enough theta, up to an, an, error, an error that scales an S epsilon times the perturbation strength. Well, pictorially, if you look at a state as a point in this cartoon of an energy landscape, we call, that it, uh, we call it an approximate local minimum as long as there's a neighborhood of states whose energy remain above the negative epsilon gradient line. To drive this point home, let's consider, for example, these five points on this 1D energy landscape. Consider our definition. Uh, then the four of these five points are our approximate local minima. And this includes point A, which has a local gradient, which is non-zero, but is constrained so that the energy can only increase with perturbations. And this also includes point D, which lies on top of a sufficiently flat plateau. Next, I will define the problem of finding a local minimum in, quantum, in a quantum system, which is specified by four inputs. The first is the Hamiltonian H of the system, which we assume to have uh, an energy that scales at most as a polynomial function of the system size n. 
We also need to specify a family of perturbations, which sets the energy landscape. Next, we need an, a precision parameter, epsilon, which we assume to be, in, to be inverse polynomially large. And finally, we need an, an observable O, which is used to characterize the local minimum state. The task is to then output an estimate of the expectation of the observable O within epsilon error for any epsilon approximate local minimum under the perturbations. And I will stress that this is not a decision problem because there might be multiple acceptable output corresponding to different local minima in a system. Furthermore, note that this is the problem with purely classical input and output so that classical computers can also attempt to tackle it. Now, as an example, let us first consider local minima of quantum systems under families of local unitary perturbations. Here, the perturbations are specified by short time unitary evolutions generated by one or two qubit poly operators. These perturbations are mathematically simple and are commonly considered in algorithms such as the adaptive variational quantum eigensolvers. However, the local minimum problem under these local unitary perturbations can be solved easily by classical computers. And this is because for any local Hamiltonian, we can show that any random state is an approximate local minimum for any epsilon that you would care about. Consequently, for, uh, for any local Hamiltonian, there are doubly exponentially many local minima in, in the energy landscape. And in this case, the local minimum problem becomes too easy and can be solved, for example, by simply outputting the observable expectation in the maximally mixed state, independent of the problem Hamiltonian. Aside from being classically easy, the energy landscape defined by local unitary perturbation is not physically well motivated, since nature usually performs non-unitary operations on quantum systems. Instead, for the rest of the talk, we will consider nature-inspired thermal perturbations. These are continuous time quantum channels generated by Limbladian superoperators. The specific form of the thermal Limbladians we consider is based on a rigorous version of the Davis equation derived by Mosgonov and Ladar, and it describes the dynamics of an open quantum system that's weakly coupled to a memoryless thermal bath. Although in general, the system bath interactions can be very complicated, the thermal Limbladians can be fully specified by just a few thermodynamic properties of the bath, such as the inverse temperature beta and the coarse graining time scale tau, in addition to local jump operators uh, uh, through which the, the bath interacts with the system. Generally, if you look at a jump operator in the energy eigenbasis, you can either increase or decrease the energy of the system. In these thermal Limbladians, the temperature of the bath sets a transition rate which favors cooling over heating operations. We now give a new quantum optimization algorithm, which we call quantum thermal gradient descent, that can efficiently find local minima of quantum systems under thermal perturbations. Given any n-qubit Hamiltonian whose energy is bounded by some number b, in order to find an epsilon approximate local minimum, we can use the following simple algorithm. We first initialize a system at any state row zero, which could, for example, be taken to be the maximally mixed state. Then for each time step t, we first estimate the gradient with respect to each jump operator in the Limbladian, for example, using the finite uh, difference method, or by measuring the expectation of the Limbladian adjoint applied to the Hamiltonian H. Now, if all the gradients are not very negative, we can then terminate the algorithm because we have found a local minimum. Otherwise, we evolve the state with the Limbladian terms that have the negative gradients. Using fairly straightforward arguments, we can show that this algorithm provably converges in the number of steps that is polynomial in the energy bound B, as well as the precision parameter epsilon. Therefore, we have shown here that finding a local minimum under thermal perturbations is quantumly easy. Next, we will show that finding a local minimum under thermal perturbations is classically hard. And for this, we prove the following theorem. 
Certain families of two-dimensional Hamiltonians whose ground states encode universal quantum computations have no suboptimal local minima for sufficiently large parameters. This implies that for these Hamiltonians, the energy landscape has a very nice bow shape. And every state can flow to the unique local minimum, which is the ground state. These Hamiltonians that we considered are a modified version of the Kitai circuit Hamiltonian, where for any quantum circuit U sub C, there is a corresponding geometrically local Hamiltonian H sub C in 2D, such that its ground state is a weighted superposition over all computational history of the quantum circuit. Hence, measuring observables in the unique local minimum of such a Hamiltonian is the same thing as measuring observables in the output state of the quantum circuit. Then, assuming the standard assumption that the quantum circuits cannot be efficiently classically simulated, finding any local minimum of H sub C must be classically hard. Now, characterizing the energy landscape of these circuit Hamiltonians is the most technically challenging part of our result, and I will now sketch the proof idea behind this theorem. First, I will briefly explain how we map any quantum circuit to a 2D Hamiltonian, which uses relatively standard techniques in Hamiltonian complexity theory. Given any quantum circuit written in the standard 1D brick layout form, we convert it to a sparse 2D circuit by adding a bunch of ancilla qubits and swap gates. This 2D circuit has the important property that every qubit is acted on by only a constant number of gates in a geometrically local sequence. Next, we use the circuit Hamiltonian construction pioneered by Kitaev and others to write down a 2D BQP hard Hamiltonian acting on the qubits in the circuit, as well as the T extra ancilla qubits that form the clock register. The various terms in the Hamiltonian ensures that the H sub C has a unique ground state, which is a superposition over all computational history of the circuit. What I've told you so far is a fairly standard construction, but our goal is to characterize the energy landscape of this BQP hard Hamiltonian and show that it has no suboptimal local minima. To show this, we propose a mathematically natural sufficient condition, which we call the negative gradient condition. And this is the following operator inequality relating the Limbladian adjoint acting on the system Hamiltonian to the projector onto the ground states of the Hamiltonian. Essentially, this inequality says that any excited states of the Hamiltonian must have good gradients, since the state version of this says that the energy decreases whenever the state is not the ground, in, the, in the ground state subspace. Now, proving this condition seems daunting because we now need to worry about all arbitrary superposition of excited states, not just the ground states of H sub C, which has been the primary focus of previous studies of circuit Hamiltonian. To make this work, our pr key proof idea is to analyze the energy gradients perturbatively. Consider the situation where the Hamiltonian H has many degenerate uh, eigenspaces separated by large spectral gaps. We want to characterize the gradients in H prime, which is obtained by, uh, by adding a perturbation to H that splits but not mixes the different degenerate eigenspaces. We then show the following lemma. If the excited states of H all have good gradients, then so does the corresponding perturbed eigenstates of H prime. This greatly simplifies our task because we can then focus on the gradients within the perturbed subspace P prime without worrying about all the complicated excited, excited states of H prime. The proof then proceeds by considering the three different parts of the BQP hard Hamiltonian in a sequence, each as a perturbation on the, pre uh, on the previous one using a hierarchy of energy scales. Now, using the perturbative gradient lemma uh, shown in the previous slide, we can then sequentially rule out local minima in the excited state of the first Hamiltonian, the second Hamiltonian, and finally the third Hamiltonian, which is our BQP hard Hamiltonian. So that concludes uh, uh, the proof sketch. And I will now tell you about the implication of our result in some future directions. In summary, we have shown that for a certain family of 2D quantum systems, 
Finding a local minimum under thermal perturbations is classically hard and quantumly easy. This implies that there is a quantum advantage in cooling to local minima of these quantum systems. Nevertheless, for typical physical systems, classical algorithms are used routinely, often with great success. This then begs the question, how can we identify more systems where quantum B is classical? Well, I'll tell you one possible method. First, find a system of interest, such as a complex quantum molecule. Usually, classical algorithms work by exploring the energy landscape defined by a classical ansatz, such as a tensor network or a neural network state. These algorithms start with an with a educated guess of a low energy state, and then update the ansatz parameters to find the local minimum of the energy. However, we also know that in some cases, such as the 2D BQP hard Hamiltonians, these classical algorithms cannot have found a truly a true local minimum. The idea for detecting quantum advantage is then to evaluate the thermal gradient in the classically optimized onset state. In many cases, this is a quasi-local observable expectation, which may be evaluated classically on the classical ansatz. Now, if we see a sufficiently negative gradient, this means that if we upload the classical ansatz state to a quantum computer, then taking a step of the quantum thermal gradient descent can find a, a better state with strictly lower energy. This will help us identify a quantum advantage for this molecule and motivates us to build a quantum computer. I hope I have convinced you that the local minimum problem is a natural problem that emerges from quantum thermodynamics and quantum optimization. And it has a nice property that in terms of the worst case complexity, it is classically hard and quantumly easy. I will now close with a number of open questions and future directions. First, as I have already mentioned, it is very interesting if we can identify more systems for quantum advantage by developing efficient methods to evaluate thermal gradients. Furthermore, sometimes the quantum thermal gradient descent algorithm may be stuck at a suboptimal local minimum. And it will be interesting to study whether, for example, a quantum Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm could find a better low energy state by, by bounding the Markov chain's mixing type. Right now, the, the classical hardness result that we proved requires that the temperature goes down inverse polynomially with system size. And it will be interesting to prove the classical hardness at constant temperature, which will imply that a constant temperature fridge could function as a robust quantum computer. And it will be interesting to also consider more general nonlinear energy functions, such as uh, one that constrains the quantum states to states with a fixed charge or uh, some desirable entanglement properties. More broadly, we believe that understanding the energy landscape of general quantum systems is an important open question that helps us understand not only quantum advantages, but also many body physics. And it could potentially serve as a new perspective to classify quantum phases of matter. I will end my talk with a small advertisement that this fall, I will start a new research group in the electrical and computer engineering department at UCLA. My group has a broad focus across many aspects of quantum computing theory and quantum science, and we'll have many positions available for postdocs, masters, and PhD students. UCLA has recently made a huge uh, investment towards a quantum innovation hub, and Los Angeles has a large and, and growing quantum ecosystem of universities and companies. So please consider applying to my group if you're interested in pursuing quantum-related research. Thank you.